Oh my, oh goodness me, are we ever going to be busy this week? Lots to show you. This is part four of the Electromechanical Clock Project. Welcome back to Azales TV. Let's make something. Now I have much more to cut out still. I've got to finish off the panels inside here. I've got to cut out the Azales logo. I've got to cut out the teeth. I've also got to cut out a new hour gear to go on top here because the old one I went too far into the teeth when trying to cut it out on a scroll saw and I've got this design to cut out which is going to be a the back plane if you like everything will sit on this and then this will sit inside the final frame so I can make the frame last and at least I'll have turning cogs so this week I'm going to concentrate on getting things mounted I showed you a while ago the support I'm going to have on the front here. Gears are going to be in this layer, these two layers. And then this goes on top with the rod for the hands pointing through, poking through this area here. So I need to add standoffs so that this can be mounted onto the back frame. And this can be mounted onto here. Now I thought about cutting plywood standoffs out. And that will work because it's all the same thickness. But I thought, no, I want a bit of a contrast, a bit... A bit a bit of difference, and you know, a bit to uh, something that's visually different, different materials. So I'm going to use these hex pillars because they're almost the same length as the thickness of two bits of plywood. So that's actually quite good. So this, these two, I've got that one. Uh, where's the other one? Here we go. These will screw on to, onto the bottom of this and they'll sit inside of the frame when I make that. So that will sit at the right height. And then this will sit on top of here, two units high if you like, so the height of that and that. And that will be via these. Now these are two longs, so I need to cut the ends off here. And also these threads I need to cut part off so that it will go into there. So that will be screwed through without going into that. Now it'll sit on top, so that'll be the next job. After that, I'm going to be cutting bearing surfaces for all these gears to ride in. Now I've got this gear, I've got this pinion here. I don't know yet if this pinion is properly meshable, for, word of, for want of a better term. So I'll need to cut out the um, the hour gear to test that against, so I know that meshes. When I know that works, and it's fine, that will glue on top of there. I can draw that out to accept the bearing bushing. I've pulled apart a video cassette recorder in the past and got a load of stuff out of that. I pulled apart that printer that was a few um, episodes ago. Got a lot of parts out like these machine rods, which are great because they're, they're hard steel, they're very, very smooth, they're machined, super, super accurate. So they're great bearing surfaces for the gears. I've also got these things, these are out of the video cassette recorder and these are the guide rollers that pull the tape out of the cassette and onto the head and these are very very smooth and they're almost exactly the height of two layers, two layers of plywood so they'll be brilliant for the idler gear. I've got another one which I managed to pull apart so that sits on there and the top of this which is like that it pushed fit on so I'll just pull it off cut this to length it's very very hard steel but it's not foil hard so I was able to foil a couple of notches into the side of this axle and then just snap it off and then just file this roughly smooth roughly smooth there's a turn that fits now press fit into this so I've made a stepped hole in this I've drilled a hole that's the width of this bit there and then a slightly shallow one that's the width of this brass shim in there and that will press into there so the next job will be putting that into the arbor press and then pressing it in place. But then this goes on top like that. And then when I've made this bearing assembly, this um, idler gear assembly rather, I'll drill this out to size. That will be press fit in there and then the whole thing will go over the top of that and it will run very, very, very smoothly. And here we go. Drilled this out and now I need to ream it to size with sand paper. <laughs> so close it hurts. Oh. We are nearly there. 
Okay, this is pretty close now. I think I can push this in with the other press. Hehe, <laughs> it works. Check this out. Smooth, excellent. Right, I'll put the pinion on the drill bit and on the temporary spacer just to mess around with it. And I've got this going on. Good. And then, uh, this way. Just holding it temporarily. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Let's make these spaces for these three bits to fix it onto there. And I can start working on other gears. is worth and then finally how much thread to the back off mm. about that much I've got this vice clamped on the edge of my work surface here I've got a clamp here to stop the whole thing from flipping up and crashing into my toes Let's do this. Safety third. Slightly shorter than the depth of the plywood, but that's cool. Now the top of the pillar to set the length. 14 millimeters. Yep, sweet. Here we go. Three pillars cut to length and cut to the exact same length, which is good. I left the threads on these a little bit longer than this one because I had extra room. Next, I'll drill out these three holes and screw those into it. Right, those are screwed in place. Getting them upright and dead straight, that was an absolute pain, but I've done it. I'll go on there, screw in place with these. So let's do that next. Here we go, nice. There's actually a just fit in there. I mean, I've, I thought I did these pillars to the proper height. They're all the same height, which is good. But there's no room in there to put a shim in. So if I need a shim, I'll cut a recess out of this on the inside and do it that way. But it all works good. I mean, I can put this on here. Let's give this a go. And yeah. That mesh is fine. Now I need a new hour gear to mesh with this pinion. Nope, this pinion, which will go inside there. Then I can glue that in place. Oh, that fits nice. So. Oh, sweet.
here we go sweet right I've done all the teeth I've sanded these all smooth all the edges both sides I've filed the pinion smooth as well and I've re I've sanded all the teeth so they're all equal let's see if they mesh properly got some very narrow pins just shoved into this Spacing should be correct. And they mesh properly, look at that. Fantastic. So next job will be to drill out the pinion and that will go on this hub. There we go. Ended up cutting it out by hand with the force of it. Just rotating it round and round and round and round. Until I had a hole. Actually quite relaxing. Now to glue it on there. There's a bit of slop, which means I can use epoxy resin to glue it in place. Make sure there's no run out. And it will settle any variation in this, because this is slightly out that way, so I can adjust that perfectly. And just like that, it's the next day. Actually, several days have elapsed, and I've got lots and lots of things done. So let's take a look. Now, first thing first, if you recall, I said these pillars were just fit when I put this on. So I've raised them up slightly, I've just unscrewed them, and I've put epoxy underneath. So they're about a millimetre higher, and that works a lot better. Secondly, making that hole that big was a good idea, because if, if you look, the hole is slightly off, set, off, off centre. But the gear itself isn't. It needs a little shim in there, but that's that's good. There's enough room now to do that. Next, I did this. I put one of those end caps for these rollers upside down in there, glued it in place, filed it smooth, and drilled the hole out slightly so it fits over the axle, which was originally one of these axles. So now this fits like this much more room right next I've finished sawing out the panel pieces got to do the DSL's logo but I'll do that last and the teeth and I've drilled out the centre portion and I've put this metal plate and that was a spider I was going to make for the clutch because there's no way I could have fitted the clutch in so what I'm going to do is take apart this clutch take out that gear and that'll be next week i'll show you how that all fits together but that fits in there so this becomes part of the clutch and it's all held in place properly i've also made the clutch pinion and that fits over with this recess here it fits over the clutch part there so that gets mounted into the back plate that part gets mounted in there and then this sticks out and is part of this gear I've had to drill out an extra recess in there to clear the circlip that's in here. Now I had to do this as a push fit. I was going to do it so that it's screwed in place. But there wasn't enough clearance above this gear here for the mechanism to put the screws in. And I couldn't glue the whole thing together because I needed, just in case I needed to take the thing apart. Now I've got to take the thing apart to pull it in this anyway. So for the time being it just push fits in, it's a friction fit and that's, that's okay. What I might do is drill through the side and put a long, either a long pin in or a set screw that will screw into this and I'll drill a hole in here. I might put two set screws in one either side so it holds it in place just to stop it from slipping but for the time being it works and it's good. Last but by no means least I made this test bed using the MDF I had left, left over from the soldering iron station. I've got everything, I've got these supports here, raised up again with more epoxy just to get the proper spacing for the top support. This gear will go over here. This support screws onto this. Let's move it down a bit, here we go. This goes on here. That on there. 
which is good. And this one there. And finally this on top. Yep. I can never remember which way around this goes. I always get it wrong the first time. Here we go. Let's just screw that down. So this is how all these gears fit together in a frame. Now, shall I wait till next week to show you how it all meshes and how it moves? Uh, nah, let's show you now. I can't tease it that much. I need ever so slight filing on some of the teeth, but... It actually works. That sounds loud, but this is many times faster than they're actually moving in real life. Thousands of times, in fact. And it's this gear down here that will be moving via the clutch that's on this gear. And that'll be the minute hand, and that'll be the hour hand. So it meshes really nicely. I need to add spaces and shims and things between the gears. And I can use washers for those and small nuts and things like that. So that's it for now. I think I think that'll do us for this week. Next week I will cut out the framework for the back. This will mount to that, and these will be properly meshing. And I'll have the teeth done, and then I can start working on the drive mechanism. And then the electronics will be the week after that. So do stay tuned because this is really picking up pace now. We've got everything moving got the hands to make as well that's gonna be nice I'm gonna have a friend make the box for this mountain hopefully if he can do it I've got a couple of avenues of ideas for that so we'll see but that's all for this week so thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment and subscribe so you get the next update I shall see you next Tuesday